So when the channel first hit 1,000 subscribers, or specifically 1,024 subscribers, I decided that for every exponent of two, I was going to repeat the same project, specifically making a YouTube play button, and every time I was going to use a different technique to fabricate the part. So the YouTube play button is a really interesting shape in and of itself because it's mostly this sort of convex, smooth thing, but and it actually has rounded parts on the front and the back. It's, it's a difficult shape to fabricate, but you have this really hard-edged concave triangle etched into the front. So it's a fun challenge to try to create using various techniques. Last time, for the 2 to the 10 play button, I used 3D printing to make this shape. And 3D printing is basically an additive manufacturing technique where you start with an empty print bed and you add material layer by layer in order to build up the final shape. Today, I'm going to be using CNC milling, which is a subtractive technique where you start with a large block of material and you're effectively cutting it away until you are left with only the shape that you want at the end. So this is the mill that I'm using, and I've used it before for the ButterBot project and for some early prototypes of the Fijot wheel, where I originally wanted to make the slotted disc out of plastic. The raw stock is on the bed that moves forwards and backwards in the y-axis, and the spindle with the cutter on it moves side to side in the x-axis and up and down in the z-axis. So this is a three-axis mill, and a three-axis mill presents a problem for a shape as complicated as a play button. because. A play button does not look like this. A play button looks like this. There's that sort of rounded bit on the bottom, and that is a significantly difficult thing to cut out when you can only cut from the top with a mill. The alternatives are to either have a cutter that sort of can reach sideways, because it's like a really bizarrely shaped cutter that could go down and etch out the side. The other method is to simply take the workpiece out and flip the workpiece over and put the workpiece back in. The problem with the first method is that I don't actually have a weirdly shaped bit like that to do that undercut. The problem with the second method is that if you don't get that registration right, then you'll end up cutting the top and cutting the bottom and they'll be, you know, maybe like this. And it won't actually have your part. You'll have like two halves of parts stuck together in a weird way. About to find out whether or not the registration worked. This uh, looked like there's a little part of it works, and part of it I'm not sure. Oh man, it's dusty. Well, it's very good, but not perfect. Uh, I'm not even sure if I would say very good. I can get rid of it on a sander, not sanding, sanding, but like sort of sanding. The registration did not work great. The compound curve, however, doing both directions, even with a square bit, worked excellently. If you, I don't know if that's gonna focus, but you can see the uh, edge on that looks very nice. A little bit of sanding just with sandpaper, and that'll be perfect. However, I do have a little bit of the separate top and bottom effect. You can see that those don't quite line up. Regardless, it needs a lot of sanding, 
it needs maybe some polyurethane or something, and then I need to make a back plate on the laser, which will get polyurethane sanding and paint as well. And I'll have to throw it all together. I decided to not completely sand out those remaining horizontal lines because I think they're actually a neat bit of evidence as to how the part was made. The square cutter that I used did go a little bit deep while doing that last contour path, but I think I actually really like the result. Overall, after sanding out that mismatched area and giving the button itself a nice stain so that it matches the charred areas and the laser cut backing, I think it actually looks really nice. As always, thanks for watching, and since this is a bit of a niche video that'll probably only be seen by subscribers of the channel, extra thanks to you for subscribing and sharing my videos. I have a lot of fun making these videos, and I really hope that you all enjoy watching them. I'll see you next time.